Let's talk about chromium a little bit, right? And, and it's something we haven't talked about uh, much here yet. And, and you know, one thing to be aware about chromium is that chromium ions, uh, the, the valence state, what we call the valence state of chromium, is really key uh, with respect to the types of health consequences that, that we would uh, expect. And, and this, is a, this is important uh, for, for, for people to understand uh, that the type of chromium, again, in the context of a toxicology 101 type of a paradigm, is that uh, you know, we go back to the exposure. And well, exposure to what? What kind of exposure? So the difference as to whether you're exposed to chromium-3 or chromium-6, what we call hexavalent chromium, is, is large. There's a, there's a wealth of literature on hexavalent chromium, chromium-6, that is chromium in the, in the plus-6 valence state. There's a, there's a wealth, wealth of literature, and it's well understood, that hexavalent chromium is a strong carcinogen and can lead to lung cancer. So again, we've got issues of occupational exposures to hexavalent chromium and how that occupational exposure informs us as to health consequences in terms of, of, of lung cancer and the mutagenic effects, the known and demonstrated mutagenic effects of chromium-6. By and large, in joint revisions and in wear debris, in chromium wear debris from, from joints, the form of chromium is chromium-3. So I'd caution people that are going to the literature or going to the internet and, and uh, looking up chromium and they're, they're seeing all of this information about chromium and cancer and lung cancer and that it's a carcinogen and that it's a mutagen. And, and by and large, as chromium-6 or as hexavalent chromium, it doesn't apply to, to uh, uh, metal on metal uh, hip implants and, and wear debris and metal ions coming from, from those uh, from those uh, hips. Uh, so so that's, that's an important um, thing to understand. Now, chromium-3 uh, can produce uh, carcinogenic mechanisms uh, by, uh, by, again, by stimulating uh, inflammatory mechanisms. There are uh, uh, scientific publications and scientific studies that, that demonstrate that chromium uh, can promote inflammatory processes and inflammatory cascades. Inflammation is known to be a uh, progression factor in the development of certain cancers. So there's been a lot of there's been a lot of research on inflammation and inflammatory processes over the last decade or so. And this um, so what is inflammation? I mean, inflammation is is, is either a good thing or it's a bad thing. Inflammation is an immune response. It's the body's way of dealing with foreign agents. So, so in that perspective, it's, it's beneficial. But the problem comes when infl inflammatory mechanisms go unchecked or go unregulated. And during that uh, uh, dysregulation, uh, the body's response and initiation of these inflammatory processes then contributes to the development of disease. And as I just told you, there's been a lot of research in, in over the last decade or so, and um, insight and understanding or improved understanding that in many different diseases, many autoimmune diseases, many cancers, uh, many pulmonary diseases, heart diseases, neurological diseases, that inflammatory mechanisms are, are contributing, if not the cause of, of many of these different types of disorders. So that's really what the you know that's really what we're we're tapping into here, uh, conceptually as how um, you know chromium since it promotes or can promote inflammatory processes how there how that leads to biological plausibility or a mechanism of action whereby chromium three trivalent chromium could be contributing to cancer. Mm -hmm.